Yo. Yo, 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 yo. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. What's up, everyone? <laughs> There's already a lot of you here. What's up? What's up, guys? You guys can hear me, right? What's up, guys? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> What's up, everyone? I appreciate you guys all being here. <laughs> I appreciate. Oh, <laughs> uh... what's up, guys? Um, <laughs> I'm sure you guys can tell by the way I sound. I, as I was setting up for this stream, I was thinking of what to say, how how to open up. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, I'm at a loss for words. I I I don't know. Um. How to start this man um how's everyone doing how's everyone doing first of all what did you guys think i kind of want to read your guys' take on it i have my feelings on it i feel like no matter what um no matter what i say <laughs> i'm gonna make one side mad and um or i might i might make either side man when i say side i mean like uh the elite or punk side um but yeah guys let, let's uh i guess we should start with the big one right that's what we're all here for um aw rolled the footage aw rolled the footage Um, so, um, yeah, what's up everyone? <laughs> I'm still, I'm still like, um, trying to think of, of, of how to, uh, how to address this. The <laughs> So obviously er everybody was, you know, looking forward to the footage of the CM Punk Jack Perry fight, quote unquote fight from backstage at All In. Um, this past August at Wembley Stadium. And there was a lot of debate, guys. I'm not going to lie. Even heading into this episode, um, I need to get my hand on this controller. Sorry. <laughs> I need to play. I need to. Um, I'm, I'm just. I, don't, I, I need to. Okay. I need to concentrate. Um, what I was going to say is, you know, there was a debate back and forth whether was AEW really going to show the footage? that that's what people were were debating over and i'm not gonna lie I, I, like right before the episode started i was like for whatever reason so i was like okay they're actually gonna show the footage but right before the the episode started i was like no nah, they're not actually gonna do it they're not actually gonna do it and i was like am i am i like i got duped they're dumb if they if they're actually doing it like i was i was going through all this emotions like obviously that, i was just like nah i don't know but anyway the episode, they the young bucks presented the all in footage of the Jack Perry CM Punk altercation backstage, and um, it was about like a minute long. It was actually much clearer than I than I thought, man. Like these CCTV cameras are are better than I expected, but um, essentially what you see is uh, Punk is the one that goes up to Jack Perry um they seem to be talking for like a few a few seconds and then um punk is the one that lunges at him uh puts him in a headlock uh, but apparently it wasn't a strong one because or i don't know like joe was able samo joe was able to pull him out um you can see cm punk actually going after tony khan a little bit um i wonder if that was the incident that made tony khan uh fear for his life <laughs> the one that he talked about but um but yeah, man. Uh, it was it was it was short as I expected, um, and I've been thinking of my take on it. And honestly, I just I so I'm glad we saw the footage because it was super entertaining. Like it was surreal. <laughs> like I'll so I'll say that. Like the, just seeing the actual footage was just surreal. I, like it, it just felt like we were seeing you know something we weren't supposed to and it, and it was insane i can't believe they put it on their tv show and what i will say too is um 
the way they uh, integrated it into the story for the Young Bucks versus uh, FTR, I think um, was was done pretty well. Like I like how uh, the Young Bucks um, accused FTR of conspiring to do that, to, like to to orchestrate all of this in order to get in their heads and all in, and um, and to uh, beat them. Um, so I like the the way it was integrated in the story. Um, I thought it was entertaining to actually see the footage but um but yeah man at the end of the day this is how i feel about it guys here here it goes i don't think it changed anything um i i really don't i really the way i see it i didn't see anything that we didn't already like kind of already know um we like pretty much we had heard most of this through you know through dirt sheets um what have you um people who hate punk are gonna hate them people who love punk are gonna love them they're gonna hate them even more for this they're gonna love him even more for this and um like i said it was entertaining to actually see it i'm i i'm i said it last week on my stream but um i might have just have sold the the footage to tmz personally but i can see why tony khan did it he's hoping to pop a rating but then you're going to create the narrative of, oh, they need Punk to pop a rating. Like, you know, there's going to be no winning for AEW here. There's there's no win. And right now, <laughs> the internet is a mess. And that's why I'm like, man, I don't know if the, I don't know if it was worth it. Was it worth it? We'll see. We'll see if it was worth it. But like I said, it, it it's not going to change anyone's mind. I'm, I'm glad we saw it from an entertainment perspective. <laughs> but from a... Uh, from from a perspective of who who does this help i don't know we'll see i know drew mcintyre is going to make the most out of this for sure i know drew mcintyre is gonna gonna cut one of the best promos ever um but i i, I don't know guys like that's that's the way i feel about it i I'm not even choosing sides here either. Like, in, by by being impartial to it, I don't want to, like. Do you guys think I'm not choosing a side? Because I'm not. Because at this point, I'm 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 just over it. And I feel like now we've opened up a whole can of worms again, that we were just barely getting over. And don't get me wrong, I know that this was AEW responding to uh, all the shots within the past week, um, and they have every right to defend themselves as well. After all the shots that WWE took during Mania Week. And you know what? The the thing is that people say, oh, but those shots didn't happen on, on live TV. It didn't have to happen on live TV. Like, they have... Social media <laughs> gets the point across. Pe more people use social media than watch cable TV. So them doing it at all, it doesn't matter where they did it. It got to people. I had uh, one of my friends who... Uh, who's a very, 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 like, casual wrestling fan, um, you know, text me about, oh, like, oh, did you see all the shots that WWE has been taking on AEW? And I was like, yep, <laughs> you see, he doesn't. So, it, if anything, it reached more people by not being on the TV show. Um, and, yeah, man. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I, I just think people are in disarray right now. This is only going to fuel the clickbait and the uh the twitter wars and and all that and i'm just <laughs> i'm over it man like i really wish um uh we could just keep going like like i don't know man like swerve is about to become world champion and, and we're rarely talking about that you know that should be a, a a massive moment but um like i said i i'm over i'm over all this cm punk stuff like i'm 100 percent over it i i don't know what do you guys think? What's everyone thinking here? What's everyone thinking? This guy stinks. All right. <laughs> you guys better behave in the chat. This is a this is a chill chill uh stream. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> I don't uh let's hold on let's look at uh let me answer super chats sorry guys let's get to super chats 
uh medical bunker thank you man says uh e-drones are imbeciles <laughs> punk's version isn't far off but that cctv proves how toxic a work environment he was creating he drew but he was a cancer um i mean yeah i'm not i'm not gonna you know agree or disagree well no i'm not gonna disagree like like you can't be doing that like that's that's you know i'm not i'm i'm not gonna play uh what's it called uh middle ground there you cannot be doing that in a work environment so no like yeah punk was 100 percent in the wrong there camilo velasquez appreciate you says punk showed his ego and osprey cooked daddy h <laughs> yeah we'll talk about that osprey promo but thanks man appreciate you um black yakuzu 94 says i got my laughs out and i'm just so very tired lol i felt shivani's reaction dude yes that's literally me right now like i am you know i'm not I'm not saying that that uh, punk is a saint. I've already like like last week on last Wednesday stream. You guys need to watch that stream because I I went in on punk. Like I I let him have it. I I I've I've spoke about it. <sighs> this is such a tired subject that I you know I'm I'm just over it now. Drew says lots of people are going to spin this discussion when it's a clear case of assault in the workplace i don't care if this is wrestling yeah pretty much you can't be acting like that in a workplace like i said i'm not going to defend that uh but I, thank you for the super chat shinko says i don't use twitter so <laughs> what the basement dwellers do <laughs> um people are just like i can imagine uh people are saying jd is like losing his mind i can already imagine uh, but yeah man like like it's I'm not, I'm not, a. am uh, just over it, man. Like I said, did I, I, is this, is this gonna, who, <laughs> that's why I didn't want to say too much about it until I saw the actual footage. Um, and now that I've seen the footage, I'm just like, well, um, you know, what, what, uh, because like I said, people who worship Punk are, are continuing to worship him. People who hate him are going to hate him. And then uh, there's me who's just like, bro, like, can we can like, can we just I want to see like Osprey versus Takeshita and, and stuff like that, you know. But like I said, um, WWE were the ones who were punching down. And yes, they were punching down because like. They're obviously the number one, you know, like company in the world. And AEW apparently spooks them so much that during WrestleMania week, they had to be taking shots. Like, it's funny because, uh, because, uh, people are like, oh, Triple H, like, we don't need Will Ospreay. We don't need Okada. We don't need Mercedes. Like, yeah, like, I'm like, you would think you don't so why is triple h taking shots during the biggest week of the year you know like if you like i i i would hope that he thinks he he doesn't need them but he's over here taking shots so he, he's all missing out on these free agents is obviously on his mind like like that shot at, at uh will osprey was a hundred percent uh unjustified <laughs> like will osprey he's literally the the 50 cent uh meme the what he say f me for <laughs> that was literally will Ospreay. um so i'm glad that uh will responded in his promo but um i'll get into that uh right now but yeah man like that so so that was my my thoughts on that i don't know are those thoughts underwhelming i just don't want to feel like um you know trying to be civil here i'm i'm just honestly like tired of it guys like i <laughs> because it it um i just wish uh because we started off the year so strong too and i know people are gonna be like we why are you saying we i mean like you know i mean we're a community here i mean we we started off you know like we started off strong and it's not like uh it's not like it's completely off the rails but it's just there's there's uh it it almost seems that way for certain people and and the perception war is very real and yeah i don't know i don't know man
Let's see, let's see. <laughs> I am AW. Hold on, let me get to uh, the other super chat. Sorry, guys. I'm, uh, I'm, there's just, yeah, I'm just like ranting at this point. <laughs> um, Drew says Osprey receipt of the year. Yeah, man, for sure. I, I, so I think that Osprey shot was a hundred percent justified. You see, like, I think that was a hundred percent justified because Triple H took the first shot and don't get me wrong. So did CM Punk. He took the first shot last week, like by, uh, you know, opening this whole can of worms. And supposedly, if you believe SRS, Sean Ross Sapp, he said that Punk apparently wasn't even supposed to talk about AEW. So, um, AEW, you know, responded with this, but you know, my, 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 I guess my biggest gripe with this is that we didn't really like learn anything new, you know, like we already knew most of this. We're just actually seeing it for the first time. But, um, like I said, it's just, um, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm over it. Uh, Math Tiger, appreciate you, says, overall episode, a miss. Way too many talking segments. Um, I kind of agree. I kind of agree. There, there was not enough. Like, you know, I watch AEW for, you know, look, like, for great wrestling, bro. And I'm not even against talking segments because, you like, some episodes can be used for that. I know they do that usually, like, in the build to pay-per-views. Um, one episode you know out of the month they'll really use it to push storylines but i just feel like this was a, a weak way to do it because they didn't really throw in too much good wrestling you know in between um maximus froth says mina and mariah need to finish the story absolutely i agree it's good to see some some stardom involvement in AEW, like some consistent stardom involvement drew says copeland penta match cooked i thought it was pretty good too and and with a with a bad crowd though with a pretty bad crowd <laughs> not jenny says when i saw the footage my jaw dropped lmao <laughs> yeah i mean i was yeah i was more so like oh man they're actually doing it like like that's that's crazy <laughs> that was my thought and uh yeah man i just I, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but I was like, yeah, um, <laughs> they, they showed the footage and, and, uh, the internet is, is in disarray right now. And I just, uh, go on a ghost. Oh, okay. I forgot what I was doing. The internet is in shambles right now. And I'm just, I'm tired of it because it feels since 2022, We've been in this in this whole mess, and just when the company felt like it was finally moving on, uh, this happens. But I mean, with that being said, yeah, outside even without this segment, um, I think this would have been a pretty. Uh, and this is just my opinion, obviously, but I think this this is a pretty like run of the mill. Is that is that the proper term? Run of the mill, um, episode of of AEW, Dynamite. Like I said, there wasn't really that much, uh, like, like, good matches, man. At least, I mean, there was the 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 matches were good, but um, I don't know. It just felt like it was weird too, cause like uh because wwe is is white hot you you really can't make them the uh the the heel promotion in in the public's eye and trust me they should be the heel promotion because of all you know the the horrible um you know allegations towards the the company and and you know people high up in the company they should be the the heel promotion still but the, frankly they're not they are not and and because of that like when the young bucks came out i don't know if you guys heard there were some faint um cm punk chants and i was just like like yep like you know like that's uh that's what uh you're you're bringing yourself to by uh by you know by opening that can of worms and it's it's super unfortunate i wish it wasn't the case but you know but maybe they want that he i don't know but like <laughs> It's just, it's weird to me, you know, like how WWE is the babyface promotion right now. There's 
thank you hunter chance thank you you know thank like triple h is is this uh savior of wrestling that uh that uh people were calling we're saying that people were saying tony khan was back in 2019 so um that's that's the situation we're in and because of that i don't know if uh you know like i don't know where i was going with that but the crowd was 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 lame today <laughs> like but they but they were able to to chant cm punk at the young bucks Let's see. Sorry, more supers. Let's catch up. Let's catch up on the supers. Drew says, Osprey saying he's the ace of AEW while being interviewed by Renee felt like the first shot at Mox. Mox coming out at the end of the Dynasty match? Dude, yes. I, I hope so. They need to... I miss John Moxley so much, but uh, he might win the IWGP um, heavyweight title, man. Like, we'll see. I'm super intrigued for that New Japan show on, on Friday super intrigued but yes i agree they definitely need to need to start that program and and make it happen for sure i need to see that match big talent 256 appreciate you man thanks thanks for the support says had to completely disconnect with wrestling twitter after tonight the hate against AEW was starting to affect my enjoyment people need to learn to like what you like and disengage with what you don't i agree but um like I said, tonight was one of those episodes where they kind of, you know, were <laughs> embracing the, uh, the, you know, the, the warfare. <laughs> like they, they were truly, you know, like embracing it. And, um, but yeah, I agree that people on people on social media just are, are they, they make wrestling ten times worse. <laughs> but uh, thank you, man. I appreciate it, and I, I hope that this uh, tight knit community here um, can at least provide some some um you know like something that you can't find anywhere else blacky kuzu 94 says how did you feel about cody finishing the story thanks for asking man because i'm actually super happy for him i know um like we've all laughed about the possibility of him losing and stuff but um i'm, I'm super happy for him and you know what it hit even more i saw the clip of uh the video package they created for him though that they showed him on raw and um you know, I just I just know how much that meant to him and and Cody is someone who's remained super, you know, diplomatic when it comes to AEW two, so like it's I could you know, I, I joke about Cody and stuff, but he's still my guy. He'll always be my guy and I'm I'm super happy for him and I just hope that they do right by him and I wish him nothing but the best and I hope that maybe one day he he comes back. But at this point no, he's the number one guy there, so I don't like he re signed obviously, but Maybe when he uh, when he wants to do his final run, I I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him in AEW. Medical Bunker, thank you. Says the CCTV draws a line under it without ambig ambiguity. If they move forward now, also shots exchanged. Osprey Triple H is free global advertising for AEW. I mean, yeah, you can see it that way, but there is a such thing as. Um, you know like perception and when you just constantly hear you know oh aw is bad aw is dying even if it's not true if it's said enough times people will start to believe it you know like by no means is aw dying but people say it so much that <laughs> there's legitimately people out there who have convinced themselves that it's dying even though that most likely their next uh deal is gonna make them most likely um a billion dollar company and they're you know they're gonna become super profitable it's just it's that's just the nature of the beast man like i can say uh you know i don't enjoy wwe that doesn't mean that the majority of people aren't enjoying it right now you know that's just my I mean that's not even the same that's not even the same comparison cuz what one what one group of people are doing is spreading misinformation what I would what I'm doing is like just stating my opinion like if I were to say WWE is is dying and I got a million other YouTubers to say it in order to sway public opinion that's per, that's perception you know um 
I mean, you it's fine if you don't like AEW, but to say they're like they're dying is like <laughs> it's crazy. How many? Let's see. AEW has been dying every every day since since the the company was founded. <laughs> but yeah, I guess we should uh we should talk about uh the Will Osprey promo where he cooked Triple H because Triple H took the the um the first shot. And I mean Will Osprey cut a uh he he's a he's he's just great in general at these promos, but um yeah, he took the shot at, at Triple H by saying, you know, that he only, he's only in the position that he's in because he was <laughs> grinding on the boss's daughter. And this is nothing new. I mean, people have been saying this for literal, what, decades. Um, it's just that now you can't say it because Triple H is uh, Papa H. He's the he's leading the babyface company and and go WWE good. Even though there are genuinely evil people running the company. Like, it's one thing to hate AEW for Tony Khan for being a dork. But to um, to uh, just brush off what WWE executives are hiding is, is legit crazy to me. But that's, uh, once again, the nature of the beast. Yo, what am I doing? Hold on. Punk stands are back. How many trolls are there in the chat, y'all? Let me know if there's any, let me know if there's any trolls in the chat. Yeah, y'all y'all go, go take that to JD from New York or or Wrestle Talk. This isn't that place. This is not that place. Um, but yeah, man, like Will Osprey had every right to respond, and in my opinion, it was funny. And um, if someone were to respond on TV to Will. I would um, be like, okay, I hope that some, I hope that Will responds again. You know, that's just that's how I would see it. Um, I think taking shots are fine. Um, the fact that WWE did so much during WrestleMania week, I thought was was super like uh, super weird. Like I said, I, I said in my uh, previous stream, but when All In week comes around, I don't want to hear AEW talking about WWE. I want to see them build up the the feuds that in the lead up to the show yeah guys but I mean do I even need to review the show I mean I don't <laughs> "Quote unquote review." They're not real reviews, right? But I mean, they're. I, in my opinion, it was an all right show. I mean, um, Swerve attacking Joe. I feel like just the crowd was 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 genuinely just lame. Sorry about my dog, guys. I don't know if you guys can hear her. <laughs> she's a she's a joy, my dog. <laughs> I knew someone was going to say this. AEW does it all year round, though. No, they don't, bro. Even if they do. Even if they do. Why is WWE responding during WrestleMania week? That is like... It screams of... Like, just... I don't know. And they're they're punching down, by the way. They, What happened to... Oh, WWE doesn't respond because they're number one. They don't have to. What happened to that? What happened to that? Because wasn't that the excuse of why did they didn't respond? Drew says, amazed the Bruce Pritchard WrestleMania 40 moment isn't being brought up more as an example of the people at WWE we're talking about, Trank. Exactly. 
um, that footage is going to have to be completely, <laughs> you know, uh, locked away and, and, and never brought up again when the truth uh, comes out, man. Heck, Triple H might not even be in power a year from now or, or months from now. Like, all it takes is, you know, all it's going to take is is one mention in the lawsuit. That's all it's going to take. That's all it's going to take, bro. WWE good, though. The product is good, so let's not talk about uh, the, the very serious issues that the company is facing. But let's talk about um, AEW dying. Let's talk about AEW dying. Because WWE is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with uh, like I'm good with both companies taking shots. I think it's it's fun. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just the the hypocrisy, man, of of WWE fans when when they were all when WWE was taking shots all last week, it was yas yas queen, and then uh today it's uh oh they can't why why are they responding on their show? They can't do that. It's one thing to respond on a podcast. <laughs> like I said earlier, man, it doesn't matter where you respond. It gets around on social media these days. Why are we acting like we're living in the 90s, you know, <laughs> where if it didn't happen on TV, you never heard about it. Heck, the uh, the CM Punk interview with uh, Ariel Hawani um, is going to end up with more views than any episode of Raw, you know, in the past couple of years. Rubio Javier, appreciate you, man. Says, as long as it's going to be resting heavy next week, we good. Hope this will be the last for a while. Yeah, man. I'm just, I'm completely over it. <laughs> people, yeah, people saying, oh, I'm done with AEW. Chances are, if if tonight is what, if, if tonight is what made you, um, stop watching then that's that's crazy i don't believe it i don't believe you you were already you were already not watching like i'm and that, that's not even a bad thing like if it's just if you don't like AEW, that's fine but i don't believe anyone for a second if they said tonight is the reason why they're gonna stop watching like nah that's that's crazy i don't believe that at all like wwe <laughs> uh, i don't even want to i don't even want to say that because i'm just doing like i'm doing what about is um at this point and i'm starting to sound like a like a fed drone as well and i don't want to do that but come on i don't believe that for a second yeah it's, i want to stop doing what about ism <laughs> but yeah guys um Next week, we are getting Willow Nightingale and Adam Copeland versus Julia Hart and Brody King. And I'm actually I'm actually excited for that. Like when I when the when the segment happened where uh, she saved um, Copeland from from the House of Black, um, I was actually hoping that this match would be booked. So I'm glad that they they went this route. I'm actually really glad about that. We also had that like Mercedes Monet segment where she did an interview and then she got like the lights went out and she got jumped and then like we didn't see who it was. The lights came back on. Like what was that all about? Was that Chris Statlander? Couldn't have been Willow. I don't think. Plus in her promo she sounded super heel like or she was giving like like vibes of a heel. If she's not wrestling till double or nothing, you know what I was thinking about uh, Mercedes Monet. Like her, her debut was great, but I, I kind of wish they would have uh, booked her debut like a whole month later, bro. Like around, like next week, you know. Like they should have done the TD Garden, like, like uh, next week then, or or maybe even at the 
no, I was going to say at the pay-per-view, but now you still could have done big business, but like a whole month later. Because, yeah, like, uh, I'm also of the belief that, you know, promos are obviously not her, her strong suit. Her strong suit is um, her actual wrestling. But, um, but yeah, like, I, I just think that's why I think, like, having her debut two months before she uh, wrestles, I think, was kind of a strange idea. It's sky blue, people are saying. You know what? I didn't even think of that. And that, that's like the most, that's like the most, uh, how do you say it? Most likely option. Copeland versus Penta was, was actually pretty cool, man. Like, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it's just that, like I said, the crowd, um, this this wasn't a case where like where like in um this wasn't a case like double or nothing last year where um the matches were just kind of bad <laughs> that's why the crowd was kind of dead but um because no because no, this match was actually pretty good with with a really great crowd honestly I probably would have been like uh, raving about the match like 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 oh this was this was really good um but because the crowd was only kind of into it it was just like yeah that was good. Like that was a good TV match, good little TV match, but it could have been so much more. But um, yeah, I just don't know how to feel about the crowd. And and the thing is, like that that's why um that's why all this talk about like crowd size, like they had a they had a pretty decent crowd size tonight. But look at just look at like how look look at how loud they were though. They weren't they weren't loud. So that's why I say like. The, the crowd size to me as a viewer doesn't affect me. What affects me is that the show is good and that the crowd is, yo, what the heck? Invisible wall. What matters to me is that the show is good and that the crowd is, is reacting because as a viewer, <laughs> when a crowd is loud, it does, it does make the show better. Oh, man. Yeah, like uh, that that match was good, and then um, I was gonna say I'm loving Katsuyori Shibata's, um, you know, I don't even want to call it a gimmick because it's well, it, I guess it kind of is, you know, using the phone, Google Translate to get his point across. I'm loving that. I'm just I I, I I'm not loving that um, he was put in a match with Chris Jericho, but I hope that doesn't last. Um, yeah, just a, a weird show all around, man. Weird show. We had um that Tony Storm Thunder Rosa segment where neither of the of the women even even talked. Like they just came out and Tony threw wine at Thunder Rosa. I thought that was like just really weirdly done. Um We also had um the FTR promo where they, you know, essentially just responded to um, <laughs> the, the CM Punk footage. Um, and they're basically like, <laughs> they they cut the, they basically cut the same um, rant that I just had where I was like, guys, can we just move on? That was essentially it. Um, but what else did we have on this show? Let me check my notes. We had Mariah May versus Anna J with the post match where Mina Shirakawa showed up to to help Mariah May. So we do have some some proper stardom invo involvement um, with AEW, which is really cool to see. Um, and so yeah, I, I wonder where that's going to lead. I'm sure you guys saw the report where apparently Forbidden Door isn't happening at. Arthur Ashe anymore because Rocky Romero said this wasn't true but the original report said that because New Japan didn't want to split the bill for um, Arthur Ashe that was the report but like I said Rocky Romero denied it so 
So I don't know where Forbidden Door is going to be at. <laughs> New Japan. Yeah, they're broke, bro. They're more broke than um than WWE was supposedly uh during the hiring freeze that they were having last year. Big Talent 256, appreciate you. Says, "Do you think TK should let Chris Jericho's contract expire? I don't think he will, but anything he's involved in is just awful at this point. I agree. He really really should. I mean, I'm People aren't going to like this, but I, w I would go as far as to say he should be... Oh, man. I would go as far as to say he should be <laughs> just let go, but that's not going to happen. And I can see Tony Khan offering him a, an extension because supposedly Tony Khan offered Matt Hardy an extension, and he <laughs> he's just as useless, but thankfully Matt Hardy didn't take it. Matt Hardy's officially gone from AEW. Thank goodness. <laughs> But, um, man, yeah, dude. New Japan still has a pretty good roster. Obviously, it's not as good as, you know, the first couple of Forbidden Doors. But, like, if you look at the roster, even with the washed Tanahashi and a washed Naito, they have, um, Zack Sabre Jr., they still have Shingo, they have um, Yota Tsuji. They have Hiromu Takahashi. Like, dude, they still have. They still have. They have Gabe Kid. Ah, oh, man, no. <laughs> they have um, David Finley. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, they still have like a good roster. Shooter. I forgot Shooter. Um, yeah, dude. Like. Like, in other words, I think it could still work, especially with involvement from CMLL and, and Stardom helping to carry a bit of the load. Um, they still have a lot of matches I would like to see. Despi? Yeah, definitely. They have Despi. House of Torture? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> yeah, dude. Sonata. <laughs> Um, I think so, so I don't know it's because I feel like Sonata is 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 pretty like all right no he's pretty good I will say that I just don't think he's like world champion material um, which I think has soured a lot of fans on him and then that match against uh, Jack Perry um, at Forbidden Door kind of also um, soured some people on him. Evil versus Chris Jericho. Tony Storm versus Azumi this Saturday on Collision? For real? Is that official? That's a crazy match for Collision, bro. Wow, that's insane. You see? That's the type of stuff, you know, that I watch AEW for. You know, just crazy, random matches like that. <laughs> like, um, well, that, well, that's not even random. Like, uh, you know, it, like, it's it's been building up over the past two weeks. But you guys know what I mean. Like, when I say random, I mean, like, matches that you just never would have, like, that wouldn't be possible without, you know, like, AEW and having all these partnerships. Like, that's what I, you know, that's what I love about AEW. So, that's that's a crazy good match for Collision, man. I'm, I'm hyped for that. That's insane. But then again, it is timeless Tony Storm, so I hope that she's not just going to be, you know, like, memeing, being a meme. Like, I hope that she actually wrestles because she's capable of it. She just doesn't do it for whatever reason because of her gimmick. Yo, I hate this world in Mario 64. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been avoiding it. Tanahashi calling Tanahashi washed shouldn't be controversial he's he's one of the greatest of all time like he literally he literally has the right to uh to 
Well, I guess it's because washed is it, it's such it has such a negative connotation, right? But um, but nah, dude, he's one of the goats. Like, I still love Tanahashi, bro. I'm so glad that I I got to see uh I got I've gotten to see him wrestle a couple times in person. What even is this? Top of the town? Bro, I hate this world, bro. <laughs> Play Ocarina of Time? I am going to do it one day. <laughs> Chris Jericho is washed. Tanahashi is just old. I mean, Tanahashi is beat up. And because he's beat up, he's sadly washed. So, so, um, I kind of agree with your take that Chris Jericho is legitimately washed because he is like, he's just, he's, he's all around terrible and everything he's doing right now, as opposed to Tanahashi, who, you know, his body is just broken down. So I guess, I guess I know what you mean. Like he's not, uh, it's not really his fault. Like I said, when I say washed, I just mean that he can't really, He's not what he used to be, is is what I mean. I don't I don't mean I don't mean to uh, disparage his skill because we guys you, we we all know Tanahashi's like one of the goats, if not the goat. He's on my Mount Rushmore because he literally saved in New Japan from dying. Ace, thanks for the super chat. Probably worth USD one dollar, but thanks for the spoilers. Ah oh, man, I'm sorry. Uh really sorry about that. I, I totally forgot because I, I avoided saying the spoiler last time too. Sorry, guys. That must have happened on Rampage. And and, and I like how you sent a super chat for that. <laughs> like you didn't have to. I'm sorry about that, guys. I, I, I totally forgot. My mind. I guess I just got so hyped because I there I needed something to, to be hyped about after... Uh, after uh you know just all the the chaos of of today's episode like it's just it was all over the place there we go oh you're you wanted the spoiler oh okay <laughs> eighth i appreciate it then uh you but still, I am sorry for those who didn't want to know. <laughs> but thanks for clarifying, man, because I did feel bad. But <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> for anyone who didn't want to know, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's this guy's problem, bro? Connor, get out of here, bro. Go watch JD or something, bro. This isn't a this isn't a stream where where someone yells. Just cause I I talk uh, calmly, <laughs> I can't believe people have have problem with that. You see, that's what too much um fed content does to your brain. Like you think that every podcaster needs to be or or streamer needs to be yelling and stuff. That's crazy. That's insane. Yeah, I basically I covered everything on the show like super, super like lazily. I I um. I don't know. It was, it was like outside of the the footage. Like I said, it was it was okay. The the Samoa Joe Dustin match was was pretty good. <laughs> Okada's English is is really good. I totally forgot to mention the Okada squash match. That's the weird thing about uh about the uh the big three as as we're all calling them. None of them were advertised ahead of time, but they were all on the show. That's actually a legitimate a legitimate gripe I've been having with AEW lately. Like I I miss the days where they would advertise the entire show for next week ahead of time. 
Like, I, I hate these, like, last-minute matches that, that, that Tony Khan announces the day of on on Twitter. Like, I just... I miss, I miss the days of knowing, you know, like, what we were going to get, like, a whole week ahead, man. Like, that that was one of the things I really, really enjoyed about AEW. It might not, it might not be something, like, important to, to a lot of you, but it just, it makes it feel super, how do you even say it, almost uh, unplanned? It makes things seem almost unplanned when... Like, it, it, it almost felt like AEW had a perfectly clear vision of what they wanted in the first couple of years when they would uh, announce cards, like, ahead of time. Like, if you if you want to talk about a legitimate problem I actually have with the company right now, it's, it's that. Evangelist, I hope I said your name right. Thanks for the, the super chat, though. Appreciate it. Says, the footage tonight just looked... Just locked in how goofy it is that Punk sees himself as a locker room leader. Dude is his own biggest mark. Probably gets mad at his wife for wanting because <laughs> it gets in the way of his. <laughs> I mean, yeah, man. Like it's you. Like I said earlier, I you can't be acting like that in a workplace environment, even if it's wrestling. Like, come on. Like, it's it's just stop. <laughs> just stop, bro. <laughs> Someone should have just told him that. I mean, I'm sure they did, but but he he didn't listen. Um, did you guys see Chris Hero in the footage? By the way, he looked he just looked he looked so stressed, so devastated. I think they all knew, you know, the weight of the situation. Like, like really, Punk, you're doing this again. Like, I th and yeah, I think they all just knew. Like, like this would be the the last time probably. A creative team he doesn't even need a t i mean apparently he he already has a team it's will washington jennifer pepperman brian danielson and um what's his name jimmy jacobs jimmy jacobs is the one that everybody blames for for the bad stuff <laughs> i don't know if qt marshall is a part of that uh booking committee What I think happens from here. I hope we just get back to where we were as in, you know, guys, I, I, I just realized it now, especially after, you know, like how, uh, how wonky April has been so far for AEW, but the build for, uh, the build to revolution was some of the most fun that, you know, I've had watching AEW. You know, in the lead up to Sting's retirement, like I, uh, it was it was just really good television. Like it was really well done, and um, and because that was only like a few months ago, I know like AEW still capable of doing it. They've only added more to their roster, so. But yeah, like um, like remember when we got Darby versus Takeshita on TV? <laughs> I brought up QT first. <laughs> Big Talent two five six says, "No, you're right. I feel like that's why the ratings and attendance numbers are down. If people know what they're getting ahead of time, they're more likely to buy in. Don't know why TK stopped doing that. Exactly, man. I do think that's a legitimate reason why people are are you know, like, um, iffy to to buy tickets to these shows because they don't know what they're getting. Like, you know, people will say, oh, because the product is bad.'" Like the product is is not all things considered it's 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 like I I'm enjoying it personally I can't speak for everyone obviously but um how do you expect people to buy tickets when they don't know what they're getting you know like and because the AEW roster is so big and they do that thing where they rotate talents in and out you have to advertise ahead of time because like that's the thing about uh WWE like for for all their faults 
like when you go to a, a raw show you know you're gonna see cody 100 percent. you know you're gonna see um gunther 100 percent. you know sammy like they they feature the the same people um so because of AEW's business model they have to advertise at the very least one week ahead of time and i don't even think that's asking too much bro one week ahead of time i don't think that's asking a lot <laughs> yeah the build to dynasty was actually going really really well man and it's still going well like it was a an okay episode like but now there's just more controversy and and yeah like like you said that's taking over the the news and and yep, that's where we're at. I agree. Yeah, um, and you know, all things considered, since um I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, but the new CEO, um C O O um kosha irby i think is that i hope i'm pronouncing his name right since he came in the houses have actually picked up like i said that doesn't affect me but for for people who care about that kind of stuff they you know they picked up compared to what they were late last year and that's without you know advertising ahead of time like imagine what they could do if they actually advertised one week ahead like that's a, a legitimate gripe i have with AEW right now Like, I think last week he announced Brian versus Archer super last minute. And that's the type of match that, you know, people would have been, you know, like, oh, okay, I'll go, you know, because it's Brian Danielson, bro. And then you have, um, like I said, if they did not advertise Okada, Osprey, or, or Mercedes um, ahead of time at all, like they did not put out a graphic this week for either of them. I think that's crazy. Ah, dang. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole hard cam thing that I can imagine it, like, you know, the wrestlers might, it, it, it probably does affect the wrestlers. So, yeah, I just, I don't see why Tony Khan can't go, okay, who's available next week? All right, this is what we're going to do. We're advertising it on Dynamite this week for next week. You know, like, they used to do it all the time, like like we were saying. It's just, like, come on, bro. Like, it's not even that hard. Like, you know, there there's legitimate things to criticize AEW for. Like, that's, in my opinion, that's one of them. That's one of them. I, I just don't like having to, uh, you know, scroll through, uh, through, through Twitter to, to, on the day of the show to, to find out what's, what's going to be on the show that I, that I'm watching. Like the fact that we know, um, that Willow and Adam Copeland are, are teaming next week against Julia and Brody. It's super cool, man. Like, it gets me hyped for the show. But then, I guess, with the addition of, of Rampage and Collision, like, it just feels like they've they really stopped announcing stuff ahead of time. What should they do with Ricky Starks? I don't know. I truly feel like he has one foot out of the door, man. I truly feel he's 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 out. Plus he was a he was a punk guy, so I can't imagine he was um like too thrilled about uh the stuff today. I feel like he's just done. I feel like he's he's uh you know, like counting down the days.
<laughs> Reboot AEW? Nah, no, I don't think it needs to go that far. Like I said, they were they were on track, and then they did this whole drama thing, and that's all anybody's gonna be talking about, sadly. Oh, why did I go here? Like I remember when they came to El Paso. Um, I think we knew that whole card ahead of time, like Roosh versus Brian, MJF versus Takeshita, Jamie Hayter versus, I think it was the Bunny, um, the Elite versus, was it, was it Top Flight and AR Fox? So I was super hyped heading into that show, like we, we knew that ahead of time. Had had there been no card ahead of time, I would have been like, um, there's not much to be excited about, bro. <laughs> you know, like, so I can see why people, you know, like, wait until the last minute to buy tickets. Like, I can see 100% why. <laughs> you need a big bill to squash Ricky Starks? <laughs> I think the reason why uh, Tony Khan never went all in on Ricky is because he probably knew that once Cody jumped that it was over for Ricky. And, I mean, it wasn't for a lack of trying. During uh, Punk's collision, Ricky uh, was being pushed heavily, and then it just stopped. Which is why I think uh, that that's, that's even more incentive for Ricky to go to WWE because he's a Cody and a Punk guy. How many of those are there? MJF used to be one of those. He's not. He doesn't really like punk anymore. But he's still a Cody guy for sure. No, we don't. I don't hate Ricky. I'm still a fan of his. Or unless you're talking to the chat. I don't know what the what the what the chat is saying. Like I said, I don't hate Ricky. I just that's just the way it feels. Like he feels like he's on his way out and and you know, like he it, it makes all the sense in the world. He has friends over at, at WWE. Um there's like a long line a, ahead of him in AEW just because of the of what AEW chooses to focus on and that's fine, bro. Like if he wants to go to WWE, that's fine. Like I I would wet, I would wish him well. I wouldn't turn on him. I'd be like I hope he I hope he does well. Cuz like in like during the pandemic, dude, I I really did think Ricky Starks was a future world champion and he could have been, but the roster grew so much um over the next year that, you know, and even more so now that he started falling down the the pecking order, which is a, a shame. But um, he's also more of a like he's a great in ring wrestler. Don't get me wrong, but he's for sure more of a of a like promo guy. And that's just you know, in AEW that's not a. Uh, it helps. It helps to get over, but it's not a uh, the main thing. Oh, yeah, and he's good friends with Jade Cargill, too. So that's another reason. The most shocking thing ever would be if Ricky Starks resigns. Like, I would legitimately be shocked. I'd be like, really, bro? Um, I'm sure Tony Khan will try to keep him. He'll probably offer him money. But, nah, I could see Ricky going about it like Jade. Like, despite the money that AEW is offering, he probably just sees it better in WWE. Like I said, I'd be 
I'd be 100% shocked, though, if he stayed. I don't think it'll happen. We 100% need a Jay White singles title run. I agree. That is another gripe I have with AEW right now. They're uh, they're doing most mostly good work with most of their you know stars, but Jay White, come on, bro, use Jay White properly. I mean, at least he's wrestling Matt Sydal on Rampage, but um, when is this thing with the acclaimed gonna be over, bro? Just confirm the match for the pay per view. And let's get it over with. <laughs> I'm so serious too. <laughs> like just announce it for Dynasty and let's get it over with. Give Bang Bang Gang the titles. Ah, dang. Sorry, I was going to say the thing about Jay White is apparently he's not like a he's not a mark for wrestling, you know, like all of us like and and that's kind of rare. That you know, that's what I've found about a lot of these new Japan guys like uh Will Ospreay, Jay White, like cuz a lot of the, you know, the top guys in America, obviously they grew up as WWE fans. Um Ospreay and um and jay white are special cases in in the sense that they've both openly admitted to not really growing up wwe fans you know they watched other wrestling so because of that i don't know i don't know how obviously i think jay white obviously wants to be uh you know like a a top guy but i don't i don't know what's going through his mind like maybe he just maybe he is just happy you know like being in the states getting up being able to you know collect the paycheck and every now and then you know having a big match or two maybe like i said i don't know Yeah, Will Osprey was infamously a huge TNA fan growing up. Bro, Kevin, you just described JD. Bro is probably complaining. I don't get people who, like, why watch something you don't enjoy, man? That's why I don't watch WWE. I'll watch WrestleMania every year, you know, maybe if I have the time. But, like, oh, no. <laughs> I didn't make it this far to lose. Okay. No. That's the biggest fail ever, bro. Big Talent 256. Appreciate you again, man. Says, is there a reason they're solely called the Bang Bang Gang and not Bullet Club Gold anymore? It's really weird because... Only sometimes are they still being referred to as Bullet Club Gold. But I think um I think Bang Bang Gang, I think it's just uh since it's in since AEW can can actually own that IP, that's probably why they're uh they're running with it more since that's uh aid in I in AEW uh creation, quote unquote. As uh a, you know, compared to uh Bullet Club. Bullet Club is a New Japan thing, so I don't know if it has to do with that. It's just like that's probably what what uh, Tony Khan prefers. I don't know. I'm just you know theorizing. I do still think that Jay White's gonna win the the world title. I think Tony Khan loves Jay White, but there's a long line. I'm telling you, Swerve, Osprey, Jay, Okada. Um, Hangman, uh, I would still love to see Kenny have another reign. Um, I already know that Tony probably still wants to make Adam Cole world champion. You got to have Darby finish his story as well at some point. Um, who else? Takeshita. Um, I know I'm forgetting a lot of names. But, you know, those are... That's the line. That's the line right now.
Now, I think people who want to work will will work. Like, look at Will Ospreay, look at Brian Danielson, look at Swerve, look at Joe, look at Hangman when he was there, um, Kenny when, when he was there, um, MJF. I'm responding to uh, Terrell here. He um, Don't get me wrong, there, there probably is people on the roster taking advantage of, of the money, sitting around doing nothing. But most of the people doing that are, you know, the, the, um, I don't want, uh, how do, what's the word I'm looking for? The jobbers or, you know, the mid wrestlers. Speaking of Kenny Omega, bro, I hope he's good. Bro, even Adam Cole has had enough, bro. <laughs> like, Adam Cole? Really, bro? Like, that guy's like the the nicest guy ever. And, and he even he finally had enough. Um, <laughs> he just responded to, to a fan on social media who told him to go to the gym, to hit the gym. You see, like, usually Adam Cole, like, ignores this stuff. But this is what happens, you know, like, to... Uh, to AEW wrestlers, bro. They get flooded with uh by people who who just post dumb stuff in their in their uh in their replies, bro. He was still kind of nice about it too. Here's what Adam Cole said to someone telling him to uh to hit the gym and that he should have stayed in WWE. My friend, I really mean this. I have never worked harder to get back into the ring than right now. I promise you and the world that I am doing all that I can. And when I do get back into the ring, eat me. And he posted the middle finger. <laughs> Gif. Oh, I mean emoji. Sorry. Bro, I miss Adam Cole too. I, like, people, even even when he's healthy, people, um, and I'm talking about, like, uh, like hardcore AEW fans, some of them, some of him, some of them don't like him. They call him like mid, and I'm like, what? No, Adam Cole's incredible. That's my opinion. What's gonna happen when TV deal expires? They'll sign a new one, and podcasters will run out of things to talk about. <laughs> Miro. I can't wait for a heel MJF. I know he's gonna come back a baby face, but once he turns heel again, I'm I'm gonna I'll be enjoying that a lot. We're getting the BCC versus we're getting, we're getting Brian and Claudio versus Powerhouse Hobbs and Kyle Fletcher on Collision as a way to build up Brian versus Will Ospreay, and I think that's a pretty good match as well. Drew asks, Worst expected wrestling journal tape response? Um... I know he's nowhere near a journalist, <laughs> but he is a uh, influencer. You got to give that title to JD, right? He's probably like ranting and popping a, a blood vessel right now as we speak. I think. I a hundred percent, I a hundred percent believe that Collision is gonna be better than uh, than Dynamite. No doubt in my mind, dude. No doubt in my mind. Looking at this card,
Padrino says, I don't hate TK, but he needs a break. He should hire Scott Demore to run ROH. He definitely needs someone else booking ROH. Like, and that he he hasn't even done a bad job with ROH, but he he can be doing it all, bro. That's that's the point. Like, he Tony Khan just there is a correlation with you know AEW AEW's quality and and you know the day that uh, Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor. There is a correlation there. Ramil Javier, thank you, man. He says, TK just booking for collision this Saturday at random, knowing something proverbially heavy was lifted off his chest. I assume so, man. I assume so. Thanks for the support, though. Thanks for the super chat. That means a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Can I talk with Tony Khan again? I don't know if he'll want to talk to me ever again. <laughs> the only reason why I say that is because, um, I don't know. I feel like, uh, I, I just, I, I don't know. And even then people, people overestimate what people overestimate <laughs> that, that conversation that I had with him. It was, it was like very brief and I, I did not give him advice as people, were inaccurately reporting <laughs> i remember people were saying that uh that i that tony khan asked me for advice and then people were like why is tony khan asking a youtuber for advice i was like, i never said that <laughs> drew says it was funny having a bucks countdown clock and how they kept holding off on showing the footage that was actually funny like um we didn't i didn't even talk about the bucks actually talking before the segment enough um I loved how uh, <laughs> they were like, no, you can't talk about someone um, negatively on a, on a public forum or something like that. And they're like, yeah, that's unprofessional. And then they just like restarted. Like just the whole thing was funny. Like that part, they I think the Bucks did about as good with the material as possible. It was just, uh, like I said, that showing the footage has caused a lot of chaos that I don't know how long it's going to take now to, to live down. AEW is hitting people with copyright strikes over that video. I think that's lame. Like, what did they expect putting it out? Like, why did they make it public if they were going to do that? That's actually lame. Like, and... XWF Loki says, Yo, Trank, huge fan, brother. Personally, I think that tape proof punk is a liar but i also feel very conflicted about it all i mean that's about where where i'm at like it didn't it didn't make punk look good but i'm also just i'm over it all I think it's I I have it's because I have no nothing to offer to like I'm I'm replying to Jay here because he he asked he said in my opinion Trank you are not just a fan even if you did reach out you have a platform and critique his product what's the issue it's just like I don't know the whole the idea of of a billionaire um hitting me up and being like yo um I need your advice that's just not true and I like um I guess I could have worded it better when I when I put it in one of my video essays that he uh. He, uh, like, DM'd me. Um, but, yeah, like, I just didn't want to make it seem like he <laughs> was asking me for advice. I was like, what kind of advice can I give to a, to you know, a, a billionaire? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's just, to me, that seems ridiculous <laughs> when people are saying that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, dude, you see, like, people are saying that, you know, someone in the chat is saying that AEW's YouTube comments are filled with trolls. You know, that's just, they've invited the, that type of stuff by putting this video out. And, like, all I can say is, what did you expect, AEW? Like, take me back to the build to Revolution, bro. Remember when Sting came down from the rafters one last time? That brought tears to my eyes, bro. <laughs> I mean, the build to Dynasty was was pretty good, and then but like today, nobody's talking about the build to Dynasty. It's just all about something that happened months ago, almost a year ago. Can you guys tell? I'm tired of it. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> This guy, Napoleon Navigator, so funny, bro. <laughs> he said all marks out here calling out Triple H would. He said would say it to his face or all the same like Tony all talk. This guy's funny, bro. All right, bye. Okada versus Pac is going to be great. I don't know, guys. I just don't know how long it's going to take for all of this to blow over. It feels like we were finally moving on. Like I said, it, it was started by Punk with the Ariel Hawani interview. So I'm not going to deny that. But the best thing AEW could have done, in my opinion, was keep on keeping on. Because while he's injured... AEW can just keep on putting on amazing shows and there's no guarantee that Punk can even, you know, keep up anymore. So they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be this, they, they should just be moving on in my opinion it is what it is. Will it kill this thing for good? As in all the drama? I don't think so. Well, we'll have to see, but I don't know. I just really don't know. I, I have no, I have no hopes. We'll see next week, guys. Maybe I'm overreacting, but we'll see next week. Heck, we'll see. We'll see how things stand um, on Saturday after collision. But yeah, um... You guys have any last questions before I, I, I go? Thank you for coming out though. I appreciate every one of you guys. But yeah, Jack Perry's gonna wrestle in Chicago this Friday, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be insane. I'm actually pretty excited to see his match now. <laughs> Who wins, Bucks or FTR? I think the Bucks for sure. Black Yakuzu, why are you why are you saying sorry, man? <laughs> hope the next couple of weeks are are better. He says, yeah, I hope so too. There's nothing. Favorite dinosaur? Asks Eighth. Uh, the T Rex for sure. How can it not be the T Rex? <laughs> What's my opinion on Mercedes Monet? Um, I think she's one of the, the the best women's wrestlers on the planet, but she needs to be wrestling because <laughs> that's her strong suit, not not cutting promos. But all right, guys, I appreciate you guys. Have a have a good rest of your day or, or night, uh, depending on what side of the world you're on. Um, yeah, guys, what a wild show. <laughs> Try, uh, don't let the internet uh get get to um get to get to you i guess um but yeah man we'll be back for saturday collision is gonna be a pure wrestling show and i'm actually excited for collision so 
I'll see you guys after collision and we'll talk then. Hopefully this whole thing blows over, but I have <laughs> I have um I have low hopes for that happening, but we'll see. But all right guys. See you later. Peace.